Lee, events this weekend have been overshadowed more than a little bit by the untimely death of our champion, Steve Hislop. He was killed recently in a helicopter accident. He was only 41 years old and he was the father of two kids. Now, Steve had won this championship twice and he'd won at the Isle of Man TT no fewer than 11 times. And ironically, this very weekend, he was due to return to the series riding for the ETI team. And he'd have been on the bike that he won last year's championship on. And we were all really looking forward to that. Now, my colleague Steve Parrish followed Steve Hislop's career. Steve, he was an amazing rider. Even I've seen that in my relatively short time with the series. But more than that, an amazing character. He was a very complex character, there's no question about it, but if the environment was right, which meant the team, the bike, everything in his head, then he was world class, he was virtually unbeatable. And Steve Hislop had such an amazing style, he was really a maestro on a motorcycle. If you could design a riding style, it would be Steve Hislop's. This circuit here at Alton Park, he absolutely adored, and I for one would not have bet against him coming here this weekend and winning both races. That's how good he was coming back off of a bad start to the season. He could have done it again, it's very, very sad. Steve Hislop, absolutely unique. Thousands of people turned out in Steve Hislop's hometown of Hoyk in Scotland for his funeral. Needless to say, news about Steve has affected so many people around the circuit huge loss to motorsport but an even bigger loss to his family I mean it is just so tragic and I had some titanic battles with Steve Bislop which uh, I've only got fond memories of now but all of that pales into insignificance the, the, the sad thing is he's not with us anymore and he, he was a huge character. Steve worked with me last and uh, and over a few years we worked quite close and I grew up with him I raced with him and a lot of memories and it's a uh, massive void now I think uh, huge benchmark Steve has been over the last few years. He's going to be missing now from the from the racing world. He texted me on the Tuesday evening to say he was coming up to my place on the Wednesday in the helicopter and I had a phone him back to say that I wouldn't be there because I was going to England. And I go down to do a bit of test and, and then just find his test and to be told this, it's just it's unbelievable still. It's still unbelievable. Well, we just couldn't believe it, you know, when I heard on, uh, on Wednesday. Um, you know, just especially in something like that. Uh, Steve's done so many different things, doing the TT, 24 hour racing, and uh, a lot of dangerous sports, and after something happens like that, uh, it's, you know, it's uh, unfair, really. I, I turned the phone on on Thursday morning just to see if there's any messages, and the thing was just racked full of messages. I thought, oh, Christ, what sound? Uh, so the first one was awful news about Steve, and then I didn't realize what that was, and then I went through, and then I realized, and I just, my blood ran cold, you know, it was just, Horrible. He's a good friend, you know, and uh, obviously he's very sad for everybody, mostly for his family. When I first moved onto a superbike in 99, he was like so helpful to me, you know. He used to make a point of coming over to see how I was getting on because he was on the same bike and, you know, he'd run through what gear he was using and suggest some different tyres to try and, you know, he was just an absolutely spot on bloke. He was a great guy and really good fun. Would uh, wear his heart on his sleeve, say what he meant, which sometimes got him in trouble, but. You know, I marked him up for that because it was nice to see a bit of honesty where a lot of people just toe the company line and, and won't say what they believe. 
for me it was a, a real big help because especially from me coming from the same town as, as Steve from Hoyk it, and we kind of spoke the same same lingo in a way and um, knew the same people from back home and so we kind of gelled straight away um, and Steve's experience was you know, was second to none really. He was so natural, he just looked amazing, it was great to follow I used to love following him because he was, he was, there was no drama, he was all so smooth. Every corner, every bump he knew and it's just, his mind just must have been a computer really, it just reminds me of Schumacher, that kind of thing, it's uh, how, he, how he could uh, relay the information even to me and uh, it helped so much. From his day there's no one faster than Steve Islam and Steve wanted to, to put it on the line, yeah, he was, he was just a joy to watch. I know for a fact if Steve was here and he would be back on his Ducati, you know, he would be the, one of the men to be here, if not the man. He was a genuine nice bloke, you know, and he will be deeply missed. I think he was definitely a Scottish hero, and I think that's really will be remembered. When you go racing every weekend, you're in a sort of um, a scenario where things may happen. So when it happens outside racing, it's really shocking. So it's just so sad, and it's really sad for his family and his two young boys. Difficult to imagine a more fitting tribute to Steve Hislop than to have a corner named after him on one of his favourite circuits. This is the corner, the Knickerbrook chicane, hereafter to be known as the Hislop chicane. And Steve, not the only bit of hizzy history this weekend. Well, a great way to open that corner with his teammate from last year, young Stuart Easton from Hoyk in Scotland, his his hometown. He rode the 1992 Norton that Steve Hislop won that senior TT on. A great piece of history that was. Hugely popular part of the circuit, this. Steve Hislop, massively popular with the fans. I know if he was here right now, he'd be saying, let's get on with the racing. <laughs>